Hi everybody, Martin the Flicking Feathers again today, and I'm doing another sea trip fly. Uh, this is a Vascabion. I'm tying a wee box up for myself. Uh, I'll be using them whenever I'm back home, and maybe if I make it up north to Hokkaido this year, we'll see. Um, nice fly from Norway, right? Vascabion, which is, uh, I believe, raccoon in the region. Looks good, easy enough to tie, suggestive of a few different prey species. It could be a shrimp, it could be a wee bait fish, it might even be a gobi, you know. Um, so sort of one of the everything and nothing patterns. As always, I'll put a materials list in the description, along with a link to my social media and the Patreon page for anybody who would like to support the channel. Um, I'm going to be running on a, a giveaway soon for patrons, so. If you want to be eligible for that, selection of fly tying materials, sign up to Patreon. So I've got my hooking device, this is a size 4, it's a Gamakatsu B10S, it's, the, it's a stinger hook, right? but it's basically the same as the, uh, the one that's marketed as the sort of saltwater coastal hook in Europe, uh, I believe they call it the Kappa, it's essentially the same hook are very very similar. Right, so I've run on some thread where we want a wee spot of super glue. And I've brought my thread back so that it's hanging I don't know, a mil, two mil in front of the point of the hook. I'm going to take three thread wraps over the bead chain eyes that I'm just tying in. I'm going to roll them in the same direction as my thread right, so I'm winding away from myself and I turn the eyes away from myself and then I'm going to take another three this way right, they're still loose you can still move them, just have a check um, what I want is basically when the eyes are s square if I hang the thread so it's coming down at the point of the hook there's about a millimetre right, clear space between from the back of the eye I'll just, just go to shunt it just a wee bit and I'll check it from the front, make sure it's make sure they're just nice and that's, you get a nice position and then you can come in some more figure eights, if you run your thread away from the eye then come back and then away again and then come back it doesn't really matter if you go both directions it just anchors the thread gives you a nice secure uh, anchor rather than just a couple of wraps at the you know at the, at the eyes it gives you a much more secure eye so there's only really three materials now. A very big grizzly hackle. Right, this is from a, a Magnum cape. This is an American, quite an American, or a Mets Magnum, or the, the ones that you want. And you can see this is really quite big, and the barb length near the base are the length of the hook. Now I'm just sort of finding where I think there should be okay where the stem starts to become flexible right if you try to tie it too near the butt these big thick stems usually split. Now I've got a Catch this in with the good side facing me. Take a couple of wraps just to hold it. And then take away that waist piece, the length of the back section. And I'm going to take my thread back and I'll catch in a few fibres of the hackle there. 
Right, that just sort of makes a centre to the tail. And we've got to come all the way back to there, just beyond the barb, or where the barb was before I crushed it. And that's that tied in. Take my thread forward, fold the hackle, and we'll take it two or three turns. Depending on how dense the hackle is, I quite like that. But again, it's up to you. Maybe you like your flies a bit heavier or a bit lighter. I mean, don't go crazy either way, but look, make the fly look the way you like it, so that you would fit, you'll fish it properly and confidently. Snip that away, and I'll tidy it up. Just make sure all the fibres are sort of angled back. Now wind back, but I'm not going to wind over the hackle stem. Just got to go back until the the fibres are lip. So that the hackle barb fibres are pushed against the stem just enough as to flare them like this so that they move. Right? Come to the front of this section. I'm going to take some red dubbing. This is actually I had some fluorescent red sulfur, but it was a bit orangey, so I've used some blood red SLF just to bring the red back. Um, but again, up to you. you could, I could have just went with a sort of orangey looking fluorescent red. I like using fluorescent colours um, if I'm putting a you know if I'm going for something or cream or whatever I won't but you're putting a hot spot section in this so you might as well make it hot just go back so I'm starting the dubbing at the beads and I'm going to wind the back and I'm keeping this dubbing nice and tight and I'm going to come forward and I'm going to figure eight just a wee bit short and just slightly more but very little right, I'm going to just figure eight it through the bead chain but I am not going to turn dubbing in front of the bead chain right so just go through get that in there So you should be able to see there that I've covered the gap basically, right? You, you could leave it, but I don't like leaving it. I'm going to take the same hackle, the exact same feather, and just tie it in on top. And I'm just going to wind and double it. It's a full turn. There we go. Bend the feather across the thread. Take three wraps through. Fold the stem back. Three wraps. Snap it away. Split the fibres, top and bottom. Take two turns back. And just Put a wee fold in them just to get them to go around the eye so the eye is visible. Then for the rest of the body, I'm using sulfur, just a cream, a natural cream sulfur. Same, same thing again. Right now, I've seen fast could be untied with the tail, this hackle, then a front hackle, and I've seen I've seen them tied with 
another hackle here, which I think is the kind of tr the standard pattern. So I'm going to split the front section in half, right, and I'll take my thread to the midway point, or just behind it, and I'll take my dubbing back. Put nice and tight. Then I'll come forward again. Holding up that body. I'll just take away that extra. Right. Now, you'll see that's actually slightly less than half because you need space for the hackle. If you make the dub in half, you've got to rush your front half, right? I'm just going to run my thread through the dubbing just to tighten it. Then I'll grab this, the same hackle again. Catch it in, good side facing me. Same again. Couple of, couple of turns. Just check it out, see how it's looking. We've got another one. Yeah, I like that. Two or three turns. Fold it back. Two or three turns. And it just breaks away. And then we're ready for the last section. Again, the back. Come forward. Let's run my thread through that again. And you can see I've left myself plenty of space for my hackle in my head. I think I'm going to be lucky and get the whole fly out of this one hackle. I mean, you might need to grab a slightly smaller feather and do the tip if need, you know, if you don't have enough, but I'll get the two or three wraps here. One, two, just take your time. Fold my hackle again over the thread, two or three turns, fold everything back, tie it back, just reach in and nip away that uh, hackle tip. Two turn whip finish. I'll take away my thread. And then I'll finish it off using some floss. This is glow bright number three. It's fluorescent, fluorescent red, nice and bright. Get that started. Make sure that's nice and covered up, and then. What I do, what finish? I prefer to use the tool with the floss just so that any raggy bits of skin or nail don't free it. There you go, that's it. Trim that away. Then two coats of varnish or a very light touch with some super glue. Mm. 
make sure you don't touch the hackle and then you can varnish it after that and that leaves you a lovely bright head so there you go, that's my take on the Vascabion just basically the part of the fly you know um, I'll just get a wee very light touch with the velcro not much, just to sort of pull that dub and put into the hackle a wee bit get a wee bit more movement but that's it really nice wee fly moves wonderfully in the water uh, as I say it's a sea trip, not a sea trip pattern but I'm sure it will work for a lot of other species as well so hope that was useful, hope you enjoyed it if you did, remember to give me a thumbs up below and subscribe to the channel Tell guys. Bye.